Hey guys, welcome back Fast Monty's Garage. Today we're going to talk about my oil pressure problem that I experienced at the end of last week's episode, which was the Quarantine Cruise 10, which was fantastic time, a ton of nice cars, but on my way home, my oil pressure was not normal. And let me preface that with, I have an 80 pound pump. Most of you probably have a 40 pound pump. Some of you have 60 pound pumps. So when you're cruising along at 2,500 RPM ish, you should be about 80% of your max load of your pump. So I would typically be cruising at 60 PSI and at idle, I would be at 40. Well, as you saw from the end of that video, I was at zero, at least what looks like zero. So, um, I'm going to go ahead and jump in the car and show you guys how it behaves when the engine's running. The needle actually bounces quite a bit, even though the RPM is not moving. And so I suspect it's the sending unit or the gauge or both. Who knows? We're going to get through that today. Hopefully it's one of those two things because uh, plan C is not pretty. Yeah, it's either the oil pump, which the engine has to come out of the car to fix the oil pump. Scary. Or something else drastic and Anyway, the engine has to come out of the car, so let's not go there. I don't want to talk about it. So let's get through it. I'm going to get in the car, show you how it's behaving, and we'll walk through our troubleshooting process. Be right back. You guys, this is what I call a dancing gauge. See how, see how it, it quickly moves like that? So that's why I suspect it's the sending unit or the gauge. Because the RPM's not changing. If I change the RPM, it goes up a little bit. But it's dancing. A little clicking back and forth. So that's why I suspect it's an electrical problem and not an actual pump problem. All right, guys, here's the, my oil uh, pressure sending unit. It's right next to my oil filter. My oil filter's on the frame of my car. This is the header collector area. I suspect we're getting some heat soak and it's affecting the gauge. So I'm going to go ahead and, and video taking this cable off and see what the gauge does just to make sure we have full sweep of the gauge if we do have full sweep then we're going to change this out uh, for another one and those of you that are interested why do i have remote oil filter go check out that video right there that'll show you the details of how i did it and uh, other than that i'll get to work here's the gauge it's pegged out so i'm gonna get under the car it's unplugged i'm gonna plug it back in and i'll show you the gauge goes all the way back to zero. So see how it's plugged in, going back to zero. So either the connector is a little corroded, I see some corrosion on it, or it's just a bad sending unit. So the gauge clearly works. It goes from 80 to zero. So I'm going to go ahead and just change the sending unit and go for a test drive. All right, got the new one on. I love the new one. It's got a hex on this side. The other one has just a hex on this side. This has both, so that was easy to put in. And I put the new terminal on. So go ahead and go on a test drive. Do the fav my favorite part. All right, guys. Clearly did not fix the problem. So uh, I don't know. I got to think about a plan C or plan B. Whatever the hell plan we're on. Hey guys. So I pulled the. Um, sending unit and this super thick like molasses came out and uh, that might lead me to believe we have a issue with the oil which means it's probably turning to sludge because of that PCV valve issue we had so I'll keep that in mind let's move forward still not sure if we're dealing with a bad gauge or not, or bad sending unit. So I went ahead and got a mechanical test kit. So it's a mechanical oil pressure, which means we're not relying on electronics. And this is from OTC, nice big gauge. So I'm gonna go ahead and hook, hook this up and retest the pressure and see what we get. All right guys, here it is. This is idle, I'm cold, and if I rev it, gets up to 50 and that's idle 
I still think that's a little low. But I'm going to go ahead and let the engine warm up and uh, we'll see what it is after that. All right, guys, so engine's warm. We're idling at about 1,000 RPM. And pressure's dropped a little bit. Looks like 17 PSI. I'm going to go ahead and change the oil. Maybe throw some STP in it and see if that fixes it. All right, team, this is what I'm going to put in the engine. Um, you actually put it in, let it idle for like 10 minutes, and it should clean out all the gunk. Now, remember, I had a PCV valve issue from who knows how long I've had it, but I fixed it like a week ago. At the same time, I had the oil pressure issue. And so I think the oil is toast. So who knows what other gunk is in there. So I'm just going to use this, do an oil change, see if that helps the situation. If it doesn't, then that means I probably have a bad oil pump. So that's a whole nother level of crazy because they got to pull the engine. So I'm going to put this in, change the oil, see what happens. All right, setting my stopwatch. We're going to let it go for 10 minutes. I'm also going to monitor this situation. And see if it changes. All right, guys, approaching 15 minutes. And I've been hovering at 7 PSI for at least 12 of those minutes. So that's better than zero. We got that going for us. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the car and change the oil. All right, new oil. Idling about 900 and looks like 11 to 12 psi, maybe 11. And it's hit some revs here. Wow, I think that's a lot better. Woo! All right, last thing we need to check is the oil filter. You should do this every time you change your oil. Okay, here's the most recent filter. Oh boy. That looks like bronze to me. I'll let it sit for a little bit. Oh man, so it does look pretty, but ugly. Let's see what remains, see if it's steel or not with the magnet test. Tiny bit of metal. I don't. Looks like mostly bronze, copper. Oh my gosh. Okay, guys. So that rainbow of fruit flavors you saw in the oil shouldn't be there. That was excessive. That means. Uh, the bearings are going bad, which means the engine's coming out. Oh, joy. So let's talk about some possible root causes real quick. Um, you guys remember I had that PCV valve issue uh, a couple months ago? Well, that's dramatic and can be dramatic on your engine, as we saw, because if you have a PCV valve issue, you're not getting all those gases out of your crankcase. Those gases get absorbed by the oil and turns to sludge. Oil turns to sludge and the pump can't pump because the screen is full of sludge. Your bearings aren't getting enough oil and then you're getting metal on metal contact with the rod journal, rod bearings, main bearings, etc., creating that rainbow of fruit flavors we just mentioned. That's my theory. 
Uh, the other thing is I probably did a piss poor job of cleaning out the debris from the, ro the lifter that blew up um, several months ago. So the combination of the two, not good for me. And that's how I learn, by making mistakes. And I hope you guys are learning from my mistakes. Jeez. So um, I should have actually checked the oil filter before even looking at the um, sending unit or the gauge, because that would have been like right away. Oh, crap. Take it apart. And so if you guys don't have one, get a decent um, oil filter cutter opener cutter opener yes that's what it's called i'll put a link below for that uh so i guess the positive spin let's try and think positive here uh, i can start doing some mods that i wanted to do on the engine from the last build uh one being actually on the exhaust because every time i have to check out the transmission like when i do the T tkx video i was swearing up and down because i hate removing the exhaust the exhaust is slip fit the magna flow system so I think next week I'm going to go ahead and start on the exhaust, but in taking it out, I'm probably just going to cut it out and then put V-band clamps in front of the muffler. So that'll be next week's video. Uh, I've been dying to do that. Other than that, um, I think the week after that, we'll get to the engine, get it out, and do our root cause analysis. So you know my guess. Feel free to guess below what you think the problem is, but... Man, I'm disappointed. Um, so I'm going to do it right this time. I was in a rush last rebuild, so I'm not going to rush it. I'm going to be patient because that's the cardinal sin of any car project is not being patient. And that's my fault and only my fault. So thanks for hanging out, guys. Uh, I hope you learned something and stick with me through the project. We'll go through some other things I haven't covered in the past, like uh, the uh small block not small block the short block rebuild that'll be added to the whole video series and we'll go from there so thanks for hanging out until next time building fast driving faster see ya